I was uh, kind of cleaning up in the shop and I found a extra piece of 1095. This is 5 30 seconds by uh, 2 inch by 12 inches of 1095. I thought, geez, it'd be fun to make one of those old combat daggers out of it. And so I looked around, saw a bunch of different designs. Of course, the classic is the Fairbairn Sykes. Um, but there was a Marine Raider um, combat dagger that I thought was pretty cool. They all kind of look the same. Uh, and then there's, uh, there was the V42 just, just on the American side. And so I looked and looked at some of the features that they all have and I decided to put my own take on it. Um, mine's going to have a 7 inch blade. It's going to have a full tang handle. Um, it should be fairly ergonomic and comfortable, very standard. Um, this is kind of how I do my design work. Um, usually I design on graph paper using a pencil and uh, French curves and circles and things like that and a ruler. Um, but I just did it right on the bar of steel because I knew exactly how big it was and those sorts of things. Um, but this is designed um, in the same fashion that I usually do. So some of the features it's going to have are it'll have a little pommel back here with exposed metal. Um, I'm going to forge the guard in. There's going to be a thumbprint area like on the V42 just in front of the guard so you can have this kind of a grip where you hold it uh, like that and then do your thrusts. Not that I ever would do that but uh, anyway just kind of a fun project and uh, I'll show you as it progresses. Okay, so I've got about as much work as I can get done on this uh, prior to the heat treat. You can hear, probably hear that noise. That's my uh, forge. It's up to temperature. And I'll try to get this out of there and get it right into there as quick as possible, like that. And hopefully we won't have too many warping problems. Um, the next step after this is cooled as completely as I can get it, will be to uh, put it in the oven at 400 degrees uh, probably at least twice for an hour. Um, I'm not looking for this to be super duper hard, um, just hard enough to hold a good edge. Um, I don't want it really brittle so that it breaks if you try to actually use it like, I don't know, stab a pumpkin or whatever. finished ended up really nice nice clean lines uh, better than I thought it would um, getting the double edge and getting everything to line up um, perfectly is uh, very very difficult I'd say that um, getting this knife executed um, is harder than doing the grind on like a Tom Brown tracker at least for me so this is this would be like a prototype um, it's, it's just I had a bar of steel and I just wanted to try a different style of knife. And I think if I was gonna do, there's a couple of things I would do differently. Um, first, uh, you probably saw that I had basically the knife shape ground out before I started doing any forging. And one thing I would do would be to leave this bar um, here completely full and then forge in the guards and then grind things out. Um, that's because when I started, um, hammering these it was kind of difficult um, to keep it in one spot and the only way to do that is to put it against the anvil. Well when you do that it flattens this side but it also flattens the bottom side and um, I would probably not forge the thumbprint area in again I would probably try to grind that in somehow um, because I think the combination of um, forging in the guard and then doing that left some, you know, a few thousandths of an inch uh, of uh, problems with straightness and that, that becomes a problem when you try to glue on the handle. So I actually had to do a fair amount of uh, playing around with this to get the handle scales nice and flat. A uh, real fun project. This thing is just scary. Um, I guess you'd call it an assault knife. Um, you can shave with it. Uh, you know, it's just, just insane. And uh, thanks for watching.